Hello. And Chris, you're always tired. You can't hide it in my chat. <laughs> How is everyone tonight? Hopefully y'all had a great Monday. Not not too hard. We had a great weekend. It's great to know Peter. Do anything special or just hang out at home and hopefully play games. Hey, it's good explaining. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, Chris, you're totally getting plenty of sleep. If you consider four to five hours a night plenty. Okay. Yeah, wore it just for you, Chris. Because you're so supportive, I had to wear your shirt tonight. Hello, Chelsea. So many amazing people in chat. Thank you, thank you. Okay, let's see if I set up the shout out stuff right. Because all of y'all deserve shout outs, but Chris, most of all, for sharing everything the past few days as I do my first stream. So. test this. Hey, it works. So how was everyone's weekend? How was everyone's Monday? Now we'll post the game stuff again in case you don't have the game. Working on badges is sight in a big life. Oh, well, we know that, Chris. How far along did you get on the badges site and live stream? Ooh, Jaws of the Lion. What character are you playing as, Peter? And yes, that big live stream is what? Less than two weeks away now? Ooh. What is there? Maybe one. Just one game we don't know what we're playing now? Yeah, I saw you open up the Discord. And you also opened up so people can start saying what games they want to play with us during the charity live stream, which is great. Hatchet and Demolitionist. See, I've opened Jaws of the Lion. have not picked what I want to play as. But Hatchet did catch my eye. But then again, I think they'd all be great characters. Well, as you know, we're, I'm going to be playing Cartographers tonight. Oh yeah, the characters were really cool looking in Jaws of the Lion. Which, I'm trying to remember, I think I still need to post the box opening video that I did to my YouTube. Uh, so let me switch. I don't know how many of y'all are going to be playing along with me or have the game. I did already post the link so you can play it digitally. Yes, Chelsea, thank you for playing along. And a lot of y'all probably saw online that uh, Thunderworks has actually provided two codes to their digital game that I get to give away today while streaming. So it was a great feeling that they reached out to me and offered that. So I decided I'd play two games tonight. And after each game, I'll give away one of the codes. Charity, just for you. And because the Discord's been awesome, I have the Discord thing set up too. Okay, so I 
I believe most of you all know how to play, but I'll just go through how I set it up. Um, for the scoring cards, I already randomly decided and kind of picked through to make an easy setup game for the first one. How do you play? Uh, Chris, I, I know you know how to play, but I'm going to tell you anyway. How about that? <laughs> okay, so the game is played over four seasons. Um, and there are scoring cards. And each season you're going to score two of the cards. Uh, there are four different color backs to the scoring cards. You select one randomly from each color. And then randomize to which A, B, C, D edict card they go with. I've already set that up to make it a little bit faster. So I'm going to reveal which ones that we're going to play with. If you're playing along with your own copy, of course you can pull those out yourself or I'm going to have them on screen the whole time. Uh, so edict number A is going to be the broken road card. Uh, so you're going to get three points for every continuous line diagonal line that that touches the left side and the bottom of the map. Edict B, we're going to be playing uh, scoring the stone side forest, so connected mountains by, with green color. We'll get three points per mountain connected to another one with green. Edict C is the golden granary. So this is three points uh, for each water, uh, let's see, Let's make sure I say this right. Because I just blinked on it. So it's the ruin space. So you get three points for each of the farms on top of the ruins and one point for water adjacent to a ruins. Kids planning is going to lurk. Okay, I'm going to attempt. I set something up for lurkers. Let me know if this is going to work. Because this was too fun not to do since I know people love to lurk. Yeah, so you can either lurk yourself or I can call you out as a lurker. But I still love when you're here lurking. And so we can chat about how great you are for being here even as life gets busy. Because even if you can't play, I'm glad you're here. It brings joy to me as I spread joy to everyone else. So um, the fourth edict, Edict D, will be the shield gate. So you're going to get two points for the second largest set of red, continuous touching reds which are red is the village. Um, so we're basically going to be playing solo rules um, at the end. I probably won't subtract all the points at the bottom of the cards because everyone likes to compare high scores. And I've heard complaints about how low the scores can be if you subtract, subtract all those. So it's more fun to see a lot of points, isn't it? So kind of like Chris did on the last charity stream we played the modified solo rules so you're playing solo but you still get points like it was a regular game so for the ambush cards we're going to be adding let me actually switch so it's easier to see there we go so in this view you're going to see which season we're at which two are going to be scoring for the season and then the deck I'll be drawing with each season we add one ambush card randomly into it, shuffled up. I've already done, added the first one, shuffled it. We will be playing map A for the first game. I know a lot of y'all have the game. Um, I will again post the link to the dig if you want to play digitally because that was a great link that Chris found before. I believe it is has A, and then in the corner you can click to B when we play the B map. And Chris had the great idea of playing with colored pencils. It's fun to show it in color. Of course, the game itself comes with the small pencils, where you can draw the actual symbols of 
the forest village farm water monsters. Does anyone have any questions before we begin to play? I know most of y'all know the game. Does anyone see the stamps for this? Yes, I saw on Etsy someone had made custom stamps. So you basically get a set of each of the five colors. And then it came with like a little color, uh, rainbow color wheel of ink. You could get like a small ink or a large ink, depending if you wanted to buy multiple sets of the stamps. I was very tempted to pick those up and try to use those for the charity stream we're doing in a couple of weeks because I knew they wouldn't arrive for tonight. But yeah, they are indeed awesome. Thank you for reminding me about those, Peter. Well, if she super wants them, I kind of want to say, what's stopping you? You know they're awesome. They're a great product. You're supporting someone in the ga gaming industry who's making them. And it's for a great game. I'm sure you're, they're on the way. Okay. Fair enough. There we go. <laughs> wink, wink. So, unless I hear otherwise or see otherwise, I think we're ready to play. So, I'm going to leave the cards on the big... Also, back the expansion. Uh, you're talking about Cartographer's Heroes, I believe, which we'll be playing Cartographer Heroes during the charity live stream. Uh, me and Chris and a lot of other amazing people will be joining us on Zoom. Don't know everyone yet, but I'm assuming most of y'all will be with us. Uh, yes, yeah, so the Heroes, yeah, I believe there's three additional map options that you could buy as an expansion to that um i believe we're going to be playing the neblis map chris i believe is what you said um i don't remember the name of the last the one we played last time but the last time we played with like the lava and the volcano but this one we'll be playing will be a little bit different in a couple weeks ne uh Chris, uh, I th you keep saying Niblis. I believe I looked it up. It's Neblis with an E. I could be wrong. We can look it up again, but I've seen it. I and E, one's wrong, one's right. <laughs> I won't say if you're the one, one that's wrong. Neblis, Niblis. Either way, we're going to have fun with it. Uh, so if it works for y'all, you can tell me to switch and see the scoring cards bigger again if you like. For now, I'm going to keep all of the explore cards bigger, so it's a little bit easier to see which one gets flipped. Yeah, you're right, Peter. Whatever the name is, we're gonna have fun. Because we're gonna, because we're so many amazing people playing together. I feel like I'm rushing into this, but you know I'm typically quiet and I'm getting used to chatting and being chatty. I feel off because I was watching Monique right before I came over here and she chatted for like 30 minutes with five people. It was just ridiculous how much she can chat and laugh. I'm still getting used to it. Nachos. Ooh, nachos. Uh, Napster. <laughs> how many different end names can you come up with, Chris? Okay, I assume we're all ready to play now, <laughs> as Chris jokes around, which I'm more than happy to see that. So I'm going to go ahead and give this one more shuffle, all of these explore cards, and then we'll flip for the first one. Wafers. Are they vanilla wafers? Wafer cookies? What kind of wafers? Okay, so first off, we have the Treetop Village. So this is kind of... The elongated Z needs to be green or red. Cookies! Yes, cookies. Oh, speaking of cookies, I'm going to pull my cookies out. I have Girl Scout cookies that I just ordered online. Today I'm eating... What, what is, are they please called again? The lemonades. Yeah, I used to buy some from friends back in Texas, and this year they posted a link that I could buy them online and still support them so i was like yes and yes i'm buying those now 
And I spent too much on cookies, probably way more than I should have. But it's been a couple of years since I've had Girl Scout cookies, so I had to buy extra, right? Uh, so I need to draw my treetop village onto my map. Oh, I'm talking so much, I'm getting distracted. I'm not really playing, am I? Um, so I will... So I'm not going to draw the shapes. I'm just going to color in each as close as I can. Which you can watch what I'm doing. Copy me or not. Hopefully you're not because we want different scores. You want to try to beat me. Chris, if you lose here... I won't get any points on your stream, but also if you beat me, you don't get points. So this is, we have not set that up for my stream yet. Okay. If, looks like it's showing up. Necco Wafers, Ninja is not playing tonight, Chris. Okay. Well, that's okay. I'm still glad you're here, lurking or not. Still chatting, still having fun. You don't want to play because you're afraid I'm going to beat you now because of how often I've played the app. Yes, since I won that app, I've played well over a hundred times. And have I gotten good at it? You could say that, but it's okay. Okay, so now we have the hamlet, which is the red, either basically the V or the five block. If you do the smaller one, you get a coin, which you can fill in on your map. Oof. which I'm liking that slightly bigger one right here in my corner. Just came to support. Well, the support is greatly appreciated. Don't want to Put me to shame until the live stream. Okay, okay. I, I see that smack talk, but you, you can't really back it up tonight, can you? Now, the only frustrating thing about the app I've discovered is if you don't have internet connection, you will play offline and it will not save your high score. And of course, when I had my high score, I was offline. So, Chris, I, I think you would really enjoy that with how smooth it is how fast it plays like I've, I've gotten to where I can play a game in pretty much five minutes and I've learned almost all of these cards all the shapes do I know the names of everything not off the top of my head but that's okay too many distractions like already well I, I think you put those distractions on yourself for one but that's okay Next we have the Rift Lands. This is one square of any of the five terrain types. Yeah, it would be interesting to play against other people. Um, the main way that that does it is it has kind of this, the scoreboard thing like for the weeklies. Because then it, you're playing the exact same setup as other people for the week. And then trying to get the best score. I need to draw my rift lands in and I see no reason not to add it here. I'm going to go with the red, continue building up my red, continue my corner, my left edge to bottom edge. Seems the best of both worlds in that instance. So currently we're at a total of three spring. Uh, once we get to a total of eight or more, we will stop and score for the season. The next card is a ruins so that means this next the next card we reveal will need to be placed on one of your ruin spots website discord live stream battling a, a horse of ninjas you know the average monday a horse of ninjas i i would love to at least see that because that sounds both amazing and terrifying at the same time a horde okay a horde makes a little more sense, but still, it would be kind of funny if it was a horse of ninjas. So we got a, a double ruins card. Uh, so that means we still have to play onto the ruins. And the marshlands. Yeah. 
the alias you set this kind of me of oh nightbot is yelling at me saying so I did something wrong but I can go check it right now and I can do Save that. Yes, that is much better. Chris, thank you for lurking. We love you. You're amazing. Thank you for all the amazing support for sharing and posting everything as I prepare for my streams. Whether you're in the background or chatting with us, we love you. So I need to draw in the marshlands. The marshlands was green or blue, t shape Go make some badges and site stuff. Yes, later, my friend. Love you. Take care. Get some stuff done so you can get some rest. So I need to draw in my marshlands, green or blue, as I keep yakking and talking. And that won't do what I want it to do, so I will just do this. So I know Peter's playing along and Chelsea is playing along. How are your maps looking so far? You feel confident about what you're doing? Think you went the wrong direction? Not, not great, Chelsea. Well, Chelsea, have you played this before or, or how much have you played? Because I, I think you played with us on our last stream at least. Last time we streamed this. And the next card, while while we go is the great river this is either a one by three with and then earn a coin of blue or the w shape of blue Oof, okay and just as an update we're at two three four five six total for the season so we're getting close to scoring the season modding last time so you weren't paying attention as much well hopefully you can pay attention more this time and get to play and really enjoy it and we're going to play twice so you have two chances to get better maybe win and maybe even win the app so i need to draw my great river hmm The debate begins. I uh, don't want to do that. Well, let's start working on surrounding my mountain. And I need to mark in that I now have a coin. Because I took the smaller that earned me a coin, marked it in the bottom of my map. Okay, next card. Hopefully you're all ready. If not, you can shout at me. Say, hey, slow down. Chat more. Play less. However you want to do it. But here we play games. Spread joy. So as long as we're playing, it doesn't matter how fast. And Peter is ready. That's great. So the last one is going to be the fishing village. It is a 1x4. Either red or blue. And it is also a total of two, mixing it eight for the season. So we will be scoring after you place. What's the D scoring? D scoring is the shield gate, which is two points for every red in the second largest grouping of red. So if you have a tie for two that are the same size, you get to score one of them. But otherwise, it's the second largest bam thanks you're welcome so that probably means that i don't want that red to touch this red if that's gonna be the case um oh. 
thinking a little bit of red going this way. So one by four, I'm choosing red. You could have chosen the blue. Either way, we're adding a one by four to our map. And remember, if you ever complete, if you surround a mountains on the four adjacent sides, not diagonal, adjacent only, orthogonally adjacent, you get to fill in a coin for surrounding the mountain. Okay, so now we're going to score for the round. I'm going to switch this back to the other view so now we so we can see the scoring a little bit easier. So we're scoring A and B this round based on spring being A and B. So you're going to get three points for every diagonal row that touches both the left side and the bottom of your map. And that is a continuous diagonal line. So if there's any breaks in it, it won't score. So in this case, I have one, two, three lines that touch from side to bottom. That's only the left side to bottom. Three points for each. So that would be, so in the, on your map, where it says A, write however many points you score for this round on that edict. So I'm going to put nine, because so three times three is nine on that one. B is going to be three points for each mountain that is connected by green to another mountain. In my case, I have three mountains connected, all by green. So that's three points for mountain, that's another nine points. Now, if you had any coins down here already earned, you can mark the number of coins you've already earned in the bottom left corner of the scoring. So I have one right there. Now the fourth box is for any of the monsters, uh, any orthogonally adjacent spaces next to a purple monster on your map, you would lose points for. Someone has been playing the map way too much. Why do you think I've been playing it too much, Peter? Um, so, right now, no monsters were revealed. So, of course, we have no adjacent spaces next to a monster that have not been blocked off. So, in this case, we get zero points for monsters. Add up the total for the round. And that's going to be 19 for the round for me. Look at that perfect score map. It is not perfect in any way. It may look good now. There's no guarantee. Thank you, Board Game Freeze, for following. Glad you're here. I don't know if you're actually in the chat hanging out or if you just came by real quick, clicked that, and had to run. I know you were getting off work right as I was starting to stream. And I hope you had a great day at work. Chelsea got seven. Peter thinks I just scored the max for this setup. It's possible. I, I won't. Chris, Chris, you don't have 22 points because you, you're not playing. So for every time you post that I have this many points, and I know you're lying, I'm going to give you that many negative points when we play for the charity stream. Well, it's okay if you messed up on this game because we're going to play a second game. So, and I'll make sure if, to cover all the scoring stuff, say it twice maybe, to make sure that there are no mistakes. Chris, the eight coins is probably only possible if it was the end of the game. So if you had 22 points, you're not that great. I have to say it now. <laughs> It wouldn't even be legendary in a solo game. <laughs> and Chris, I have not set up the Chris win in my chat. Like I told you, it's not here yet. <laughs> I'll probably do it a little bit different. 30 points currently. It's just going up the more you talk. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to take all of the Explore cards back to the stack. We're going to add one more of the ambush cards we're going to mix it in randomly so now there are two ambush cards in the explore deck once one of those comes out it stays out of the deck so it can only be revealed once 
but there's a possibility of all four ambush cards being revealed by the end of the game. Likely? Maybe. But hopefully everyone's ready, so now we're going to move on to summer. Hey Daniel, thanks for stopping by. Yes, it was a good day. That's not even an accent, but I had a great day, especially hanging out with everyone here now. And just in case you want to play along, Daniel, I will post our digital. So there's a digital link to that so you can play along. Uh, we have only completed one season of the first game so far. Um, I will be giving away a code to the digital app after we end this game and then after the second game. Um, but yes, I watched Daniel. Uh, who are you streaming with? What Which con was it? You, you streamed on, what was it, Saturday night? He was making calico cookies. Uh, were they shortbread cookies? And then showed off the calico game. It was a fantastic stream, especially since he said it was his first stream. I, I felt it went better than even my first stream. Okay, so for this season, we'll be scoring B and C, which is the Stoneside Forest, green, uh, Mountains Connected by Green, and then the Golden Granary. So you get three points for every farm that is on top of a ruined space. Well, Daniel, go ahead and put exclamation lurk because you're amazing and we love it when people lurk here, even if they can't play along. But if you have a chance, tell us about what you're making for dinner because you have amazing recipes, cook some great things, love seeing your pictures. And then you also get one point for every blue water space that is next to. What does lurk do? I thought you saw it, Peter, but. If Daniel doesn't do it, I'm going to lurk him in a second. Ba basically, it's one of these Nightbot tags where it says something special. I saw it, but why do that? Well, especially, like, I, I've seen it a lot when other people have been streaming. You get a lot of people in the background that can't play along or can't chat because they're, cause life gets busy. And either they're making dinner or doing something else. And so we'll set up custom things that say, hey, I'm lurking. Great being here. I'm listening to you. But I can't chat as much. I still love you. I still want to support you. So we, so I decided to set up my lurk. Is We want to talk about how amazing those lurkers are for being here and spending time with us, even if they can't play and talk. No, it basically just shows the people in chat that, hey, I'm here, even though I'm not talking. Um, so I started to explain what we're scoring B and C. Before we start going to the cards, do you want me to go over it more? Any questions about it? Ch especially Chelsea. I don't know if you have the game yourself playing along with it. Or if you're just looking at what I have on screen. Um, but we are playing Summer, scoring B and C. The cards we reveal will total to eight or more before we score again. I think you got it. I did the printout and Googled the cards. Okay, perfect. If you have any questions, yell at me to slow down, stop, ask the question. More than happy to tell you what, what we're playing as. So I'm going to switch back over to the other view so you all can see what I draw. Well, see which cards are drawn from the deck and then kind of see what I draw. Two different terms for drawing here. So the first card, we have the Great River showing back up. It flows through, gets onto the cart, and gets everything wet. Now, where do I want my river? Do I want to score some points next to a ruin? Or do I want to... Yeah, so one of the tips I have is Typically, you're going to score the most from A, C, and D. B, if you play it right, you can get some points, but you're going to score A at the beginning, kind of low. And then at the very end, in winter, you're going to score it again. And hopefully, you've really 
jumped that score way up by that time. D, you can get a lot of points in typically because you have so long to jump it up. So B is typically one of the lowest ones. C, kind of second lowest, is what I found. Yeah, barely worry about B, but I have noticed that there are certain scoring cards that have higher scoring potential faster. Yeah, go go huge on D and A. That, that's, if you focus on those, you can typically get a pretty good score. So your first rounds can look low, but then your last rounds can look great. Kind of like when we played with uh, Chris on our last charity stream. His first few rounds are really low, and then he had a giant last, last round. Yes, thank you, Duchess, for following. I hope you've had a wonderful Monday. Okay, I need to draw, draw my great river. Uh, I'm still getting used to chatting and playing. Probably does better for y'all because it distracts me so much. I may not play to my my best. Um, where was I? Yes, I am going to play right up here. Try to get that point next to that ruin. Start surrounding my mountains. Go for that coin, and because I went with the smaller of the two river options, I get a coin. Now, Duchess, I don't know if you're in chat or just swung by really quick to drop a follow, which I appreciate it either way. But we are playing cartographers from Thunderworks Games, and they have been kind enough to offer to give away codes to their digital app, which I'll be doing one at the end of this game and then one more at the end of the next game. So, I would assume Peter and Chelsea y'all are ready now that I've yacked for five minutes. I still need to get to know Duchess better, but yes, they have been amazing at shouting out everyone and sharing everyone's links. Like, I, I was talking to Monique before this and like, just the first five minutes, like, I was grinning ear to ear with how much positivity and shout-outs they were doing and supporting everyone. It, it was really the best way to begin my evening getting ready for this. So, as I keep chatting, rambling, we have the or Orchard. Now, this is one we have not had yet, but it's pretty easy to play. It's either forest or farms. It is basically an L-shape. One by three with a, one more crooked off the end of it. Now, Chelsea, not having played as much, I will give you the tip that in this point of the game, uh, you're going to be able to score C twice and B only scores one more time. So the farm is more valuable than the forest. And I'm going to play it right down here, right next to my mountain, cover part of one of those ruins. Surrounding that mountain is going to give me another coin. And I know I can score that, ru that farm on a ruin for C later. It is. I did pick the farms. Thanks for the tip, of course. I'm more than happy to give tips. It's more about enjoying our time together, teaching everyone how to play. I don't really care if I win or lose, because I always win when I'm with you. Yes, it sounds corny. I don't care. <laughs> okay, so the next card, I'm assuming y'all are ready, is going to be the Hamlet. Now, this Hamlet, we've played before. It's either the V or the slightly bigger one. If you play the V, you get a coin. This is red for village. I believe it's time to work on this other mountain, surround it, work on my red. Got to try to get two sets of reds up. So I'm going to take the smaller of the two reds get myself a coin 
hopefully finish surrounding that mountain soon as well. So I know we talked a little bit about what we did on the weekend and how our day was. Now, of course, I like food. I assume you all like food. What did everyone have for dinner? Because I know last time we talked about Chick-fil-A and what we were craving. But Raiders of the North Sea. I have yet to play that one. Do I own that one? That one? I don't believe I own I'm not sure if I own that one yet. I know I have Paladin, Shipwrights, which I still need to open. And I'm sure Chelsea will play if I ask her to. Because that is the great thing about meeting people online and discovering they live less than 30 minutes away from you and love playing games together. Of course. The, see, I, I, I know Chelsea. She, she's going to play anything because... She loves games as much, if not more, than I do. Her wall of games is just as impressive. Just as many great Kickstarters and Renegade games. and I don't even know all the games she has. It's The thing is, that there's such a difference in the types of games she has collected that I, have, that I don't have. And the stuff I have that she doesn't have. And so it's such a great crossover. Because you're like, oh, I want to play that. And she's like, oh, I want to play that. And so we can share games so easily now. Okay, I assume we're ready. We're going to move on. We're currently at a total of four for the season, going to eight. So we have a couple, at least two or three more cards that are going to be revealed, if not more. Forgotten Forest. Yes, weekly game nights is a must. Yes, I did miss it last week because you got your second shot and we're feeling a little... Well, were you feeling under the weather or is it because... Uh, we left over food for my mom, plus side of the wedding, planning that scene. That is great when you have family near that can feed you. <laughs> Chuck had to work late. That's what it was. And then it was Friday or Thursday, Friday, you weren't feeling as great, if I remember correctly. I promise we won't talk about pickles as much this time, So because we, we don't want to make you sick on this stream. We want you to enjoy your time here. So talk to me about food you do enjoy. So I need to draw the Forgotten Forest. Forgotten Forest, you either have the Z shape or you have two that are diagonally adjacent with one coin. Ooh. Okay. I'm starting to see where the lines are being drawn in this case. I want to, I'm going to go, I kind of want that coin. I like that coin. So I'm going to go with a slightly smaller set. Try to hit that diagonal later in the game too. So don't forget my little coin right here. Let's see. And then, no, yeah, no pickles. Uh, Daniel saying with Chelsea, I'm assuming on the no pickles, I'm not a small gentleman, so I enjoy all food. Yep. Team no pickle. Okay. There's a chef for 20 years. Oh, nice, Peter. Any specific places that you worked at uh, or any special recipes that you, you took away from that experience that you feel like sharing? Um, we have cooks in the house. Yeah, I, I really enjoy enjoy cooking myself um i occasionally post the random things i decided to throw together kind of like cutthroat kitchen in my own kitchen fine dining uh i probably would not have experienced much of that then because honestly i don't do much fine dining um yeah so this weekend i did some like mega burgers with black beans cheese and rotel all mixed in and didn't even put it on a bun. I was like, it's too big for a bun, but ate it just like a burger. It was glorious. I know some people were posting that they it didn't sound good because the black beans in it. But it's one of the few types of beans I enjoy. So I decided, hey, a little extra protein, a little extra veg. Well, beans not a veggie, is it? 
It's a legume. I guess we're ready for the next card. I am rambling like no other. And we have revealed a goblin attack. Short order, amazing steakhouse, but because of me. Oh. Yeah, cutting meat with the meat meat saw would be interesting. How are we going to do this? Uh, the goblins. Okay. So the goblins, I believe, based on the solo rules, uh, the symbol... Oops, my headphones just got... So it's a little hard to see, but in the upper corner, it shows that you start in the bottom right of your map at the edge. 200 points for Slytherin. Uh, sorry, Ravenclaw here. Uh, is negative 200 for Slytherin. Uh, so bot starting in the bottom right corner of your map, I'm going to switch over to the map view so I can show it off a little bit better. You're going to start bottom right in the corner, and then it goes, uh, based on this symbol right here, it's going to go counterclockwise up and around the map until you're actually able to draw it. So in my case, um, the three purple in that direction cannot fit here because that's blocking that's blocking this is blocking so the first available space going around i have to draw it touching the wall is the first option plus two more diagonally adjacent now if for some for some reason this came out and like all the spaces near the edges were filled up and blocked you'd go all the way around the border trying to draw it and then you would step in one and then go all the way around, continually stepping into the map until you can finally draw it. If somehow you can't draw it at all, then it would not go on the map. Oh man, how did I... Did I know that? No, Hufflepuff. And then, oh man, how did I... No, know that. I'm assuming you meant to say not know that. Um, I'm not sure if you're talking about Charity, Chelsea, or myself. Now, it, it seems kind of obvious that I would go Ravenclaw just because of the raven and the and the bird. Oh, no, the solar rules for the rules on here. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it is something you have to read into. Uh, Chris, watch your language. <laughs> Seems if we're going to get on to Harry Potter discussions, I may need to make some Nightbot things for which house you're in later. So we can bring this up and... <laughs> yeah, Chris, I may have to, to ban that word. That's such a filthy word. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, well, with Goblin Attacks, the nice thing is they don't actually add to the total of the season, but... They do appear and kind of mess up our boards. Now, keep in mind, any of these adjacent squares next to the purple monster spaces will be negative points at the end of each round. So we're, now we're going to attempt to surround those monsters and block them from taking our points. So I'm going to switch back to the other view so we can show the cards again. I assume we're ready at this point, and we can ignore Chris saying bad words about... Ah, Chris. <laughs> I just... Yeah, ig ignore Chris. I, I, I hate to say ignore Chris, but sometimes... Even when we're playing, Chris, you talk so much. I'm like, hey, it's your turn. It's your turn. It's your turn. But it's okay. We love you anyway. We love all the random tangents you go on. Ye, you may live for a while. <laughs> okay, so the next card we drew was the Homestead. The Homestead is the classic Tetris shape. And it needs to be either the village or a farm. Isn't that Braveheart? Honestly, I need to go watch Braveheart again. It's been quite a while. 
There's been so many great movies since then. I'm not saying it's not great, but I'm like, do I want to watch Braveheart or something newer, better? Eh, you decide. Maybe we'll make that a poll at some point if y'all decide what movie I watch next. Because I know Chris wants me to watch, uh, what was it, the, the Emperor's New Groove when I'm over at his house. Chris, you're going to hate me, and I'm okay with it, but Die Hard is not a Christmas movie. It is only a movie set during Christmas time. And I will, that is a hill I'm willing to stand on, because the primary premise of the movie is not Christmas focused. Thank you, Chelsea. Like, I won't argue that it happens during Christmas, but the theme of the movie is not Christmas. Well, the thing is, you could change the Christmas party to any other type of party, and it would not change the movie. But there are plenty of Christmas movies out there that if you change the theme of the party, it would make a completely different type of movie. Yes, Chelsea. <laughs> If Chris isn't careful, I'm going to make this a thing in my <laughs> night bot. <laughs> I'm going to continually post, <laughs> Team Die Hard is not a Christmas movie. <laughs> well, I'm not saying why they shut it down. But if like plenty of offices have holiday parties, not just for Christmas. Like... My company will do other parties. They've done Thanksgiving lunches and other, they've done other holidays. Like they've done July 4th and all that stuff. Like you could easily have a different type of party there and the whole thing could still be the same. Well, they were, if it was Halloween, they would have walked through the front door just wearing the mask and not, and no one would have said anything. Uh, I still need to draw the homestead. <laughs> I'm talking too much and getting too drawn into Team Die Hard is not Christmas movie. <laughs> but Chris, thank you for the talking point at minimum, even if it's controversial. Um, what was I going to do? Yes. I was going to do this. I'm going to draw my little homestead right here so it, nice to have some villages on each side of my farmland right around the corner of the mountain and i have surrounded my mountain for another coin i don't care what the writer said <laughs> I am still team Die Hard is not a Christmas movie. Because it is not about Christmas. Even if it does happen during Christmas. And if you're not careful, Chris, I will take away your mod privileges. <laughs> uh, you know, I just... I love you either way. It's fun to get into these petty little arguments that mean nothing but make me smile. And I'm sure making others smile too. Okay, so let's verify what total we're at for the season. One, three, four, five, seven. So we're not at eight or more yet, so we're going to keep going. And now we have the Hinterland stream. This will be the last card that puts us a total of nine. The hinterland stream is either form or water and the big V or L shape, whichever you want to say. It is a Christmas movie. I'll say that for you. <laughs> okay, I need to draw my hinterland stream. 
<laughs> and I will draw it up here. Okay, I'm going to move on to scoring my map for this season. This season was B and C, so let's switch back. Go over the scoring, just for the sake, just to be easy. I did not change my stone side force, so I still only get 9 points. That's going to go on the B space of the second scoring section. Now for C, remember you get 3 points for every farmland, which is the, the yellowish brown, on top of ruins. You get one point for every blue water space next to the ruins. I have one, two, three farms on ruins and one water next to. That is ten points. And next up Number of coins. I have five, uh, no, one, two, three, four, five, six coins. Make sure I get that count right. Which I need those coins to offset all of these negative points I'm going to get for this goblin attack that happened. So I'm going to get one, two, three, four, five. Well, let me start down here. One, two, three, four, five, six negative points for that monster because that is for every orthogonally adjacent space next to a monster that has not been filled will earn you one negative point. Other evidence in your thesis? Nay, I mean fact. Just because you say it's fact does not make it so. Just like I can't sit here and say it's a fact that the sky is red. Well, no. Typically it's blue. Well, I just looked up and my... Y'all didn't tell me that my overlay is offset. Boom. Fix the overlay. Okay, so for that round, I got... Hey, look at that. 19 points. Exactly the same as the first round. Chris, what game are you playing? Because that's a lie. Okay, so we're going to take we're going to take that goblin out. He can only show up once during the game. He's now out to the side. We're going to take one more monster card. Add it to the explorer cards. Shuffle, shuffle, and we're going to be switching over to fall, where we will be scoring the C and D. And remember, D is the shield gate, which is the two points for every red and the second largest adjacent set of red grouping. So, in the instance of mine, I have two different red groupings, but the second largest is only four right now. I may need to work on making it bigger if I want more points for that card. Now, here's hoping everyone's ready. You can tell me if you're not. Hopefully you're done scoring. Peter, you got 15 points that round. Chelsea, how did you do? I, f I feel that you have a good grasp on it and you're probably doing better than that first round at this point. I'm going to take a quick munch break. Not lunch, munch. I'm going to munch on a cookie. You have a bajillion points. Well, it sounds like you're playing whose line is it anywhere where the points don't matter. Chelsea got 14 points. Okay. So I'm going to eat one of my lemonades. And the first card is a Knoll Raid. Okay. So we've been attacked. This raid... <clears throat> C shape of the monster, top right corner. We're going to start looking in the top left corner of our maps. And then 
This one shows we go counterclockwise down and around until we can fit in that C shape, starting with the edge of our map and then moving in once we get back to that upper corner. So mine's a pretty good example of how we have to go all the way around till it fits. So next to the wall does not fit. Keep going, keep moving. First space it moves, fits in is right here on this wall, touching the wall as a C shape. So I'm going to fill that in right here. And then after I do this, I will switch back to the other view so y'all can see the cards a little bit easier. Now on the plus side, that it did block one of the monster spaces from the other monster, but it also opened up a lot more negative spaces for me. behind in chat but the real Christmas movie is the friends we made along the way well sounds like what's going on here the friends we made along the way as we stream and play games together Try not to be too loud crunching my cookie. What is everyone's favorite Girl Scout cookie? Okay, I'm gonna get ready for the next card. I'm assuming Peter and Chelsea have already drawn their, their monster in. Tagalongs, definitely a solid choice. Now remind me which ones the tagalongs are, because it's not typically the one I got, so I don't know it as well. But our next card is the fishing village, which is the one by four of either red or blue. Which is what I've been waiting to see, because I want to add that next to my other reds, if possible. I'm going to do this. Um, do I want to go up or do I want to go over? I'm going to go up, up and down, up and down. So I'm going one by four. Get my little village expanding. Population is growing. How about yours? Chocolate peanut butter. Yeah. Oh, chocolate and peanut butter are always so great together. Well, Chris, do you prefer it because Hans Gruber falls or because it's a Christmas Christmas movie? <laughs> yes, I'm going to I'm going to poke and prod you all night cuz I know you're going to do it back. Um so that was the fishing village. It is a 1 by 4 red or blue. Don't I dare. <laughs> I dare, and I did. <laughs> and if you're not careful, I'll do it while I'm at your house. <laughs> okay, I'm assuming y'all are ready for the next card. Did I enable stream in Discord? I thought I did. I did not disable it like you said. I know my Discord is linked to my Twitch. So if it's not connecting and showing up in the Discord that I am live as a on Twitch, I blame you, Chris, for however you set it up. Okay, so our next card is the orchard. Green or yellow. So Forester Farms and the the classic L shape from Tetris. How can I not cover this ruin, blocking off some of that monster? I don't want negative points. I like positive points for that ruin for our score 
C score. So I'm going to go and place this up here, even though I'm not going towards A. Okay, I'm going to say another controversial opinion. Oatmeal raisin cookies are better than chocolate chip. What do y'all think? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Now we got you talking. <laughs> Convince me why chocolate chip is supposedly better than. I'm going to go to the next card while y'all come with come up with insufficient reasons that I'm wrong. So next up is the treetop village. It is the long elongated Z of green forest or red villages. Next time make chocolate chip cookies, create a chocolate bar into it. Okay. What kind of chocolate bar? We're talking milk. We're talking real cocoa, dark chocolate. How bitter. And I'm going to... Uh, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and do this. Block off more of that monster. Like a classic Hershey's yourself. Fire. Well, you know, I had to say something controversial to get y'all to talk. And it got Chris to change what he was talking about. <laughs> I won't argue that chocolate is amazing or not. I do enjoy chocolate from time to time. I'm more of a milk chocolate than dark chocolate type person. But I found that oatmeal raisin cookies, A, are more consistent. Chocolate chip cookies are always inconsistent on how they're made. I can always trust an oatmeal raisin cookie to be what I expect. But then again, I like my fruit, I like oatmeal, and I like a little extra texture and chewiness to the cookie. Chocolate chip is either all crunch or all chew. Never both. Always chocolate, always. Now, if we're talking chocolate and peanut butter, or chocolate and banana, peanut butter, banana, Going like milkshake, yes, but cookies, chocolate chip, I would probably rank as my third favorite cookie. It doesn't even get second place. Second place gets the peanut butter cookie slot. Um, so we're going to keep playing. Uh, I assume you've drawn your treetop villages in. Um, we are a total of six right now, looking for seven or more. Chelsea's just, no. <laughs> just no. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm going to move forward. I'm going to set this aside in case you still need to draw that treetop village. One more card. Great, great river again. Now this is going to be the last card because this gets us to a total of seven. So be mindful where you draw it and what it earns you. 
Uh, Great River is one by three plus a coin or the big W. I'm wondering if I've painted myself into any type of corner here that I can't get out of. I'm thinking right up here. I want that coin. I'm going to aim for potential more points on A. Okay, if, if y'all want to tell me when you're ready, I'll switch over the screen. We'll go to scoring. And at least we're having fun, smiling along the way. We're ready. Peter's ready. Chelsea, I believe you're probably ready. Yep, there we go. Just saw it. Post. So let me do a quick switch. I'll go over how scoring works again. I assume you figured out how this works by now. But for anyone who wants to watch later, has questions about it, this is the first time we're going to score the shield gate. So first we're going to start with the Golden Granary. Remember you get three points for every farm that is on top of a ruins. One point for every blue water space next to it. So I'm going to add mine up. I have one, two, three, four farms. That's 12 plus one, two for the water. So 14 points right there. Put it on the C space of the third scoring round. And then D. For the Shield Gate, for your second largest grouping of red villages together that are all touching, you get two points for each of those squares. I have a set of nine and a set of eight. So for the, and then of course over here a set of five. Second largest is the eight, two points each is 16. Then I count up my coins, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven coins. Chris, I assume you have a bajillion points and the points don't matter, so you're not going to win. Uh, let's see how many orthogonally adjacent spaces next to the monster I have not blocked off will be negative points. I have one, two, three, four. So for this round, I have a total of, looks like, 33 points. Let me know how y'all are doing this round, if it felt any better. Hopefully it was. Hopefully there were less mistakes. Chris, I have one more point than Justin. Yeah, that, that's what he likes to try to act like. Peter got 26 points. That's definitely more than the last round, Peter. Well done. Took a bath on the goblins. Yeah, it, it is definitely hard when... You would get more of those monsters showing up. Um, so this null raid card is now going to be out of the way. Um, we're going to take those cards, we'll put them back in the explore deck, take one last monster card, mix it in. Now, bear in mind, we have two monsters left in this explore deck. We may or may not see them. Chelsea got 23. Definitely better than the 14 from last round. Oh, it's feeling better this time. Now, did y'all get more points in your Golden Granary or the Shield Gate ones? Are y'all leaning heavily into red? Or did you preparing for the last round or was more of those points from your farms and water? Shield Gate. That shield gate can, can be pretty strong if played if played well. Yeah, so Chelsea says the golden granary got her a lot of points. That definitely a good way to get points. Now remember to focus on your shield gate and broken road this time. We're playing for the winter is going to score both A and D. So go back to your bottom corner. Go from left wall to bottom right if you're able to. Get those diagonal runs in. Picked up two on with the river from round two, but really I need to take care of the goblins. Yeah, the goblins can be nasty the earlier they come out because that adds up. It multiplies because it's every round they're going to trigger. So I've realized if they come out early, take care of them early. 
But if they're coming out those last few rounds, you can start to almost ignore them because they're only going to hit you once. Okay, so we're going to the last uh, end of the winter. The cards are going to total up to six or more as opposed to eight or seven before we score. So I'm going to switch back over. I believe we're ready. We seem, seem to be on top of this today. First card, the Hamlet. So small V with the coin or the five block with no coin of red. Ooh. Now I see no reason not to add this against... Yeah, I think that needs to go right here. Potentially lead into by diagonals. Start to surround that one of those mountains. Maybe get one more point off the mountain later. That's another coin. So Daniel, you're still listening in. Thank you for still being here and lurking. Um, hopefully preparing dinner is going well. Let us know what you're making. And give us something fun to think about, talk about. I'm sure you're making something wonderful. And I'm going to go reveal the next card at this point. Unless y'all are not ready, which you can try to shout at me. Trying to remember the lay I should go shout at me in five, four, three, two, one, and then not see a post and assume the delay is there. But either way, I'm ready. I assume you are. Farmland, okay. This one finally comes out. It's a fun little one. You get it at one by two with a coin or the standard X cross of farms. Do I want to block off some monster stuff again? Or do I want to... You know what? I started the game going all out towards my broken road. I'm going to prepare for it. Maybe I can hit it. Go. That left side. Get that coin. Daniel, I missed part of... That, but if dinner question was directed at me, making pad thai. Ooh, yum. Yummy, yummy. I think I've made, I may have made that once last year. I really need to try it again. Finding the right noodles for it is probably the hardest thing to do around here. Like, you can buy packages of the noodles, but they're kind of hit or miss on which ones you get. I almost want to look up, see if there's a way you can make the noodles. Okay, so we're currently at a total of two for the season, looking for six. So we're going to keep going, keep drawing, and we got the treetop village again. Green or red, long Z, find a world market. Yep, world market used to have a lot of stuff. I used to go there a lot when I lived in Texas. A little can be a little bit pricey at times, but I found going, especially around the holidays, they'd have deals on everything. Used to get some family coffee there, where I'd get like the the drink flavorings, like there's caramel and peppermint and stuff like that. I need to draw my treetop village in, and this is gonna be hard to fit in. I think what I need to do is just work on my mountain. Oh uh, yeah, I'm gonna surround that mountain, connect my reds. Even though it won't score me too much extra. Because I've already booked that other one in. That's one, two, three, four. And the fifth for the long Z. Now, Chelsea, you might know, is there a world market around 
or area that I just have not found yet that I need to look up and go go find. Since you've been around this area a lot longer than I have, I have only moved to Maryland, uh, well, not a little over a year, a year ago, right at New Year's. And we're going to go and flip the next card as we're chatting, talking. So this is going to be a total of six. So this is the last card of the game in Silver Spring. I'll have to look that up. Thing is, it sounds so close, but just the angle I'm at is not as close as it, it feels like it should be. Uh, Homestead is our standard Tetris piece. I don't know the name of it. One by three with coming off the center on one side is one more red or farms. Um, and of course, if at any time any of these did not fit on your map in any way, at that point you can draw one, one by one square of any terrain type anywhere on the board. H port by the house. I'm not sure about world market. I'll have yeah, I'll have to look up the world market. Like they're kind of they specialize in stuff from around the world basically. A lot of more imported type be it spices or flavors or whatever. Where do I want my homestead? Sounds like we're actually building farms here. Where should I put my homestead? Unfortunately, where I want it to go, where I need it to go, does not fit, does not contribute. So my best option is just let's make a, a, a super village up here and surround one last mountain. And then we'll move on to scoring. Okay, I hope you all are ready to move on to scoring. Um, and then, while, while this is happening, I'm going to trigger the giveaway for the app. So, we're, so we'll do the giveaway, talk about scoring, and then come back to pick a winner before we begin our next game. Before you type it in, let me make sure Nightbot is going to listen to your words. Don't type, don't type. You own the app. Well, I don't know if Chelsea has it, if Chris has it, or if even Daniel has it yet. Or I'd have to see who else is. Well, Chelsea, type in the keyword. Because I get I have two codes to give away tonight. And if there's only a couple of you in, in chat, you have a lot better chance of winning the code to get. It's either iOS or Android. So either whatever phone you have, it should work on. I'm going to move back to scoring while, while that's running. Daniel, Chris, if you don't have the app and you want a chance to win it, Jump back in chat real quick and come say the keyword mapped. Time to score this round. So I'm going to score my shield gate. Of course, this is my giant village up here. Second largest is going to be my nine times two, 18. Now let's see how many diagonal broken roads I achieved. Well, of course, I still have my first ones down here. My map is curling. One, two. Three, four, let's see if this one does five. That's broken one and another broken one. So it's only going to be five, but those score three points each for 15. How many coins do I have? Two, four, six, eight, ten. How many negative points do I get for orthogonally adjacent empty mon uh, spaces next to the monsters? One, two, three, four. So that means I have, what, 33, 43, 
39 for the round. Your phone is about to die. Are you watching on your phone, Peter? Run, get it plugged in. Go get your charger. Don't want you to want it to die. I want you to still be here to hang out. Okay, I need to tally up my totals. Uh, 19 plus 19, that's 38 plus 33. That's what, 71 plus 39. What, 110? Did I do that right? 29, 38, 60, 71, 80. Yeah, 110. So, Chelsea, Peter, how well did y'all do? Because it's not about how well I did. It's about how much fun y'all had. Sixty-four. Ooh, a little rough, but then again, you're still learning the game, so yeah, I'm glad you had a blast. Um, so, like, if it was a regular multiplayer game, sixty-four would be your total score. Well, we're gonna give you another chance if you want to hang out. Hopefully, you don't have to go to bed too soon. And Puma got eighty-nine. Now, for the solo game, you would actually subtract the points in the bottom corners of these cards. So for this game, we would actually have to subtract 24, 18, 20, and 20. That's what, 64, 84, 92 points. You would subtract 92 points. Yeah, these with how many points you can score for these cards, it subtracts a lot. Um, yeah, so even so, that would have put me at eighteen total, which is kind of a middle of the road. Let me let me see what your your name would be. So Chelsea at sixty four ninety two. That's what twenty eight. Chelsea, by the rule book, not me calling you, by the rule book, it says you would be a dim-witted doodler. I know you're not dim-witted, but maybe a doodler. We'll work on that for the next game. Yep. If you hit negative 30, which is even worse, so you didn't hit the worst, I'll give you that. If you were the worst, you'd be oblivious ink drinker, but you you weren't that. Uh, Peter, only by three points. Um... So the highest rating you met or surpass, well, Chelsea, it, it may have wanted to give you that lowest, but I'm not going to call you that last one. Um, Peter, you had negative three. The negative five was amateur assessor or zero for apprentice surveyor. My total was, would have been 18 total. Um, so the highest I achieved was a journeyman top, top, topographer. Blah, blah. Was so close to a master map smith but was nowhere near being the legendary cartographer yet. So definitely not my best game, but well, those scores, cause <laughs> Oof. well, I see Daniel's not entering the, the giveaway. Chris isn't either. And I have another one to give away later. Sticking with 89. Yeah, I'm going to stick with the not a solo score because we played together. And so, and it, it's nicer that way, right? Chris, type in mapped. Do I need to tell you again? Did you walk away? Were you not listening? Phone died. Oh, were you doing too much? Oh, Daniel did get in on it. I missed that 
I must have missed it during the scroll. Because Nightbot says Daniel has said it. There, oh, he just did it. Okay, well, I think it's time to roll it and see who won because I don't think anyone else is here. And we're about ready to move to our next game. So let's roll it, roll it, roll it, and... Chelsea, congratulations. Woo Nightbot has chosen you as the winner. Now, Chelsea, you can play it a lot more. Get used to all the scoring, and then when you're ready, I'll bring the game over for game night. And you can feel prepared to beat me and Chuck. So, Chelsea, you can decide how you want to contact me, either through the Whisper or you know other ways to talk to me on Discord or Instagram. But I'm going to need your email to send on to Thunderworks, and they will send the code directly to you. And you can choose either iOS or Android. And if you forget to, I know how to poke and prod you until you give me an answer. So I'm going to hopefully everyone have fun. I'm going to prepare for the next game real quick, reset these, get some new scoring cards out, and take all these monsters out of. Let's bring some more full. Now that everyone knows how to play, this one may or may not play a little bit faster depending on what kind of tangents Chris is able to trigger. Might miss the second game. And that's okay, Peter. Um, don't feel obligated to stick around. Uh, I really appreciate that you came, hung out with me. We're in chat playing. I need, oh, because you need to go plug in. Well, if you need to go run, find the plug now, if you're able to, while I'm setting up. No, Peter, you're one of the best. You not only were willing to stick around for my f whole first stream, the only one there chatting the whole time and playing with me, but you are more than willing to take time out of your day tonight. When I asked you this weekend, hey, are you free tonight? And you're like, Yes, I have plans to be there for you. That is the type of friend Peter is. He will be there for you to support you. He may not want to be on video, but he will be there in chat helping you out. Yes, Peter loves to play games and help spread joy. So I'm going to take those four monsters out. I'm gonna... We will be randomly shuffling those, putting one back in. Let me find four more scoring cards this time. I'm not going to plan ahead for the ones that I think are fun or different. I'm going to, as you can see, I'm going to take one randomly from each of these three colored backs. There's one. And this time we're going to play map B. So if you're playing with the paper, you can actually take that one, rip it off the pad, play on the back side. The digital app allows you to click and change it. Chelsea, let me know if you don't have map B. Chris, what did, what did you post? I'm not currently clicking on it, so tell me about what your post. Is it spam? Is it not? Or are you trolling me, trying to cause mayhem and madness within chat? Okay, yeah, so Chelsea, I'll just go and show you so you can confirm. Map B has the middle of the board kind of ruined. And falling apart. Okay, so I'm going to take one of these, shuffle it in. Scientific proof that Die Hard is a Christmas movie by the numbers and data.
I'm sorry, Christmas cannot be quantified. So, by that reasoning alone, I cannot quantify that Die Hard would be a Christmas movie or not. More of a Christmas movie than it's than it's a wonderful life. Well, it depends on the reasoning they're using. If they're doing it purely on about the amount of like the time of year it happens, or the amount of time, say, a Christmas tree or something is on screen. But then again, anyone can you attempt to prove anything by presetting the way in that it's reasoned for. So, because data can be misconstrued for almost anything at almost any time. But I will let you have the opinion that it's a Christmas movie. I am of the opinion it is not. Okay. Now, for these cards, um, you're also supposed to randomly put them for which edict they are under, so... I'm going to shuffle those and do that now. I'm going to try to do it so I'm not seeing what color I'm about to reveal. Okay, so I'm kind of glad they showed. These are a lot of the fun ones to play with. Not that any of them are not fun. Chris, you may or may not convince me to watch that later, but I don't hold it against you. It's, I'm not saying anything bad about the movie, just I have an opinion. Um, Chelsea, Peter, if y'all are playing, are y'all ready to play? Let me know. Um, and then I will go over the scoring rules for this round. Now that I feel adequately shut up. And yes, because we're talking a lot, this is takes is taking longer than a typical game of this would. Per the box. A typical game will last 30 to 45 minutes. We pushed it a little bit longer, but I'm okay with that. Because... The more time spent with everyone here is the better time spent. I just looked up and noticed that that was not centered, so I did it. Totally worth it. Yes, Chelsea. Totally worth the time. Totally worth hanging out with everyone here. If it was just one of you, it's still worth it. Because I'm getting to play games, spread joy. You're making me smile, so you're bringing joy into my heart as much as I hope I'm bringing joy to yours. So let's go over the scoring cards for this game. So, Edict A, we're going to be playing with the Sentinel Woods. Now, for this one, you score one point for each green along the edge of the map. So that's why it shows... Green at the edge of the map, scoring one point each. Edict B is going to be the green gold planes. So for each grouping of red, no matter how big, it could be a group of one, it could be a group of three, two, whatever. For each group of red that's touching three or more different terrain types, it will score three points. So, Edict C is the Lost Barony. This one I really enjoy because you score points based on creating the largest square possible. Thank you for lurking, Chris. You are indeed awesome for being here, even as life gets busy and you can't always chat or play along. We're glad you've tuned in, potentially listening, or streaming in the background. 
Of course I would like this one. Are you talking about the Lost Barony? It, well, it's it's creating a giant block. Yeah, so. I, I can mention that Die Hard can be considered an awesome movie. I'm not sure I can phrase it the way you want me to. <laughs> Does it involve Christmas? Yes. Is it can be considered an awesome movie? Yes. Do some people consider an awesome Christmas movie? Sure. Do I? No. <laughs> okay, so back to the edict card. So the Lost Barony, you're going to score three points. For basically, um, let's make sure I read it right. Earn three repetition stars for each space along one edge of the largest square of complete filled spaces. So this one shows an example of a two by two square. So you get three points for two edges. Well, for one edge being two blocks. So a total of six. Now, if it was a three by three square, three times three. 4x4 four four square, 4 times 3, so on. So, this B side of the map is really great for that because everything in the middle and the mountains already count as filled in. So, one tip, Chelsea, work around that middle. And the Canal Lake, you get one point for each farm that is orthogonally adjacent to a water space, and one point for each water orthogonally adjacent. To a farm space. So if you had one and one, they're both one point each. So the, these points can really add up well if done right. So I hope we're ready to play. Peter, I don't know if you're still there or not. I hope you are, but if not, we'll say you're looking and you're an awesome person. So thank you for playing tonight. And I'm going to go and start our next game. Now the first card for our spring of game number two is going to be the Hinterland Stream. This is our giant L shape, giant V, whichever you want to call it, that is both either farm or water. So I'm going to draw that on my map right here, covering one of the ruins, doing a little L turn over that top section. Because I'm going to work towards that Lost Barony later in the game. And as a little tip, you have more long straight sections of water than you do of farms. So there's a likelihood of a 1x4 water or a 1x3 water. But for the farms, you're more likely to find a L shape or the plus sign where you can choose to go a two by one instead. So my little tip is, especially when playing with this scoring option, choose the form for this, for the giant V, because then you can put one of the big long waters next to it a lot easier than if you went the opposite way. So now I'm going to reveal the next card. I believe everyone in chat is going to be ready. They know how to play at this point. It's just making the decision. And we got the treetop village. We've seen this before from the first game. It's the long Z. Green or red. And let's see where I want to try to do this. Yeah, let's have a little fun with this. Is it the best option? Maybe, maybe not. But I don't really care. I'm still going to do it. Because I'm going to work towards surrounding some mountains this game. I want to place it right there, top corner. Now, if you want me to switch the view so you can see the cards coming out a little bit better, just tell me. I can switch between the views so you can see my map, see the scoring cards, or you can see the cards revealed. 
Just let me know what you prefer, Chelsea. That's a please, okay. I'm assuming that's a please switch. Yes, the cards are real, yes. So, I was doing it more last game. I looked away, realized I had not switched it. But before I just switch in the middle, I decided I would give you the choice. Because I believe when I played Sagrada, I was not switching between these views as often, because I just kept it standard. But either way, I hopefully, hopefully this helps. And if you have a question on the previous one, or this one, you still have a chance to draw both. I love listening to this bottle. After I take a drink, it like starts a little pop, 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 pop from the air because it has a little air valve thing to keep it from spilling. So that, but then with air pressure, it's like pop, 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 pop. So I hear, I end up listening to it. Sometimes at night, like the air pressure changes. All of a sudden, I hear it in the background, pop, 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 pop. I'm like, I have to go lock, lock the cap so it doesn't. Keep making noise. Okay, I'm going to the next card. I believe you're ready, Chelsea. If not, just say no. Stop. Wait. And I'll give you a countdown. Five, four, three. <laughs> that would scare you. Yeah, fortunately, it's not super loud. It's just like, if I use this type of bottle on my nightstand, I hear it a lot. So, I limit it to at my desk only. So, this next card is the Fishing Village. The one by four, red or blue. Now this is the one I was talking about before where it's a really nice card next to, put, next to that form that we got earlier or that I grabbed earlier. I don't know if you made it, but I did. So I want that blue. And because it can trigger my mountain early, I'm going to do this one by four blue so I know I can get points for this side by side trigger my mountain coin and start building up my big square okay dinner time enjoy the rest of the game thank you Daniel for stopping by um, I hope you enjoy your dinner and remember, I'll be giving away one more code to the app. So if you want to either lurk it in the background so you know when I'm giving it away or come back when you're done eating, hopefully you have a chance to win because Chelsea already won. Peter may not be here anymore, so it'd be between you and Chris at this point. So if you, if you want the app, you have a really good chance of winning it. But thank you either way. I appreciate you stopping by. I hope you have a wonderful dinner. Okay, currently we're at a total of six for the season. We're looking for to hit eight or more before we stop. So I'm going to reveal the next card. And yes, I did put one monster in the stack, just verifying I did that. Okay, this is the Riftlands. This allows you to put a one by one of any terrain type on the map. This is kind of what I was looking for and needed. One more red allows me to expand my red village just enough to touch three different types of terrain. So I can guarantee that score. Now the nice thing about these rift lands, they're so small, they don't add to the season at all. So we're still going to have some more cards. Check something real quick. It looks like there's quite a few people lurking in the background, watching, maybe listening. So thank you, everyone out there watching, listening. Even if you're not playing, not chatting, it's okay. I still appreciate you being here. Do, do, do. 
Okay, I'm going to reel the next card. I believe Chelsea's ready. She's getting good at this game. Next one is going to be the Forgotten Forest. Now, this is going to be a green forest. You have the choice of two one by one diagonally adjacent forest with the coin. Does the giveaway count for the beat Chris at the game badge? No. But, Daniel, for showing up, you will get my play game spread joy badge. Now, everyone who has joined me on stream, let me know that you're here. Everyone in our Discord, which I believe everyone I've seen at least chatting is already in our Discord. We're doing a special thing with badges that I believe it's someone at Stanford is doing some research on. And Chris has let them into the Discord to test out some badges, kind of like you have little icons and stuff on BGG and stuff where you can show off what you've been doing, who you've been playing with, or things that you've won. We're trying that within the Discord. And one of those is can be my badge of Play Game Spread Joy, where if you've come hung out with me, if I, and you help play games, and I know you spread joy as well, you've earned that badge for sure. And uh, Daniel was talking about the best, uh, the beat Chris at a game badge. If you play with Chris and you beat him at a game, which, sorry Chris, it's not that hard to do, you get a badge. So, uh, I need to draw my Forgotten Forest. Um, you have the choice between two one by one diagonally adjacent forests with one coin or the Z shape. Now, which one builds into my giant Lost Barony that I'm trying to build here? Uh, da -dee -dee. Both aren't the best, but I'm going to see what happens. I, since I want a few more points for my Sentinel Wood, I'm going to take the Z. Get some Zs. We'll rest later, Chris, right? You, you always rest later, which ends up not being at all. Put my Z right here in this corner, guaranteeing at least three points for scoring option A. Now we're at a total of seven, so we need to reveal another card till we get to eight or more. And we found one. Uh, that's going to be a total eight, so this is going to be the last card before we score. This is the Hamlet. You either get a small V, three piece with a coin, or the big five piece. With basically a red square with one coming off the end of it. Hmm. And I think I'm going to build into the square I've been doing. Mm, no. Yes. Yes, I will. I'm going to go up here. Get that another three piece. Three different terrains touching that red. Because mountains count as a terrain type. And with that drawn one, I'm going to take the smaller one with the coin. And then we'll move on to scoring for the round. So we are scoring A and B this round. I'm going to click back over so you can see how I score it. A and B. First we're going to score A. Number of greens touching the sides of your map. In this case I have one, two, three. Oh, Chelsea, did I not let you know that before? I'm sorry if I did not, but yes, mountains are a type of terrain, especially considering the green gold plains for scoring. They count as field spaces and a type of terrain. I could have, and that you miss rules all the time. I, as you can tell, when teaching rules, I occasionally ramble and I lose my place when I get distracted. So I may have missed it. So I will not blame you. We'll just say, now we know. So I'm going to get three points for the greens. And then for red. Each group of red that's touching at least three different terrain types earns you three points. This red right here is actually touching four. So that's three points. And this one right here is touching three. So that's six total. Now number of coins I have is two. 
and there are no monsters out, so we're not going to lose any points for monsters this round. So a slightly smaller scoring round than the last game, but that's not a problem. So I have a total of 11. Sometimes you score big, sometimes you score low. But as long as we have fun, that's what counts. Nine. Yeah, so we're only two points apart this time. It's not quite as big a spread as the last game. So you have a really good chance at keeping it close, potentially beating me. But you're still learning the game, so it won't matter if I win or not. Because I'm teaching you and having fun along the way. So I'm going to take all of those Explore cards. Take that deck. Take one more monster. Mix it in. We're going to be going to the summer. Now this next season, we'll be scoring the B and C cards. So we'll be scoring the red ones again. We'll also be scoring for based on the largest square of filled spaces you have. Don't ever mind losing. We only lose when we don't play games. If we're playing games, spreading joy with each other, that's when we all win. Chelsea, and not to... I'm not... That's the best way to put this. Um, I don't want to throw you under the bus or make it sound worse than it was. But the good thing is the score you had last game and how you did was better than when we played... What was the name of the game? King of... Uh, Kingswood, or whatever that game was, that you just had terrible luck. Oh, Woodlands, yeah. <laughs> yeah, your, your, your luck in that one with being real-time tile laying was hard. But we still had fun with it that night, at least. <laughs> Okay, so I believe we're ready to begin this round. I'm going to remember to switch to this camera view so Chelsea can see and everyone else in chat as well. And our first card is the Orchard. Now this is going to be Green Forest or Yellow Farms L-shape. Where do I want this? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go along the edge of my map over here. Make it green. Is it a great decision? Eh, probably not. I'll probably mess it up. But that's what I decided, and I'm sticking with it. Because I really want to go for that really big square. Now, Chelsea, you're so good at this game by now. I'm, sh I'm sure you've picked a place to go, and I'm going to go and reveal the next card. And we found the Hamlet. Again, this is the small V with the coin, or the set of five square with one off to the side of red. My plan is to go big or go home. Wait, I'm already home, so I'm just going to go big. And go with the, the big 5 by right in this little corner. The middle of the map. See how big I can make this for my giant square. We're at a total of 3 right now, looking for a total of 8 or more. So let's keep moving. Uh, we found the Temple of Ruins, so this means the next revealed card, unless it's a monster, but the next terrain that we reveal will have to go on top of a Temple Ruins. So we found the Homestead. This is our classic Tetris 
short T, whatever you want to call it, one by three with one sticking out the side of it. it needs to be Red Village or Yellow Farm. And at least one of those parts has to be on a ruined. Okay, I may end up painting myself into a random corner that won't benefit me, but sometimes safe is sorry in this game. And she's ready. Okay, we're at a total of five looking for eight, so we'll go to the next one. We found our marshlands. This is our big tall T. Green or blue. Forest or water. Cool. Fresh water. Okay, um, I've been looking for something to match up against my farms, and that's going to be right here. And I know I messed up that song lyric, it's not cool fresh, it's cool clear water. I don't remember the artist on that. But it's from like old campfire cowboy songs that I used to listen to. And we would travel to Colorado. And then they had like little cowboy cookout shows that we'd get to watch. And one of the songs was about around the campfire, searching for water. Cool, clear water. We're at a total of seven right now, getting for potentially our last card of the round unless we find a monster hopefully not but here we go so no monster but we did find the forgotten forest this is again the diagonal one by one with the one by one diagonal adjacent and a coin or or z again this is not z man games this is thunderworks games I think my best bet is going to get a coin up here. I'm going to go with the one by one diagonal setup for the coin. Surround a mountain for one additional coin. Now our, our total is eight, so we're going to score for the round. Do a little quick switch. Show that scoring again. We're going to go with B and C because it was summer. First off, red sections touching at least three different terrains, three points each. I have one, two, three now. So that's going to be a total of nine. Now, for C, largest square of filled spaces, you get three points for each square along one edge. So basically, two by two, two times three. If it's a three by three, three times three, and so on. Now let's find the biggest set I, that I have. I do have a 3x3. Three three. Could not quite get my 4x4 four four going. So it's a 3x3. Three, three. 3 times 3 is 9. Number of coins, 4. And no monsters. So 0 negative points. That gives me a total of 22 points that round. Hopefully, Chelsea, you did just as good as me. You were only 2 points behind la last round. 19. So again, doing really well this game. I think now that I've explained it a little bit better, you can see the scoring cards. Played it. Gotten used to playing it with me. It's going to be a little bit easier to score. Now, granted, we are playing a multiplayer scoring. But if we were played solo, there'd be a lot of points we're going to be subtracted at the end of this game because these are some of the highest scoring solo cards that they subtract from. They would have been 25, 21, 24, and 24, so even more than last game. 
Yeah, we're going to keep it multiplayer. We're just going to go for high score here. Now, I don't know how loud this is or how not, or how cool it sounds, but this linen finish on the cards, I'm, I'm hearing as I shuffle. And it's kind of near the mic, so I don't know how it sounds to y'all. But it's fun. So we're going to move on. Uh, we're going to remember we're going to be scoring C and D this next time. We're looking for a total of seven. As we flip these cards, first one is the Hamlet. Not too loud. Perfect. Just loud enough to hear, I hope. Enjoy this. This to show that I am actually shuffling. I'm not trying to. I, I keep looking over and seeing that my Twitch is showing that I'm playing Sagrada, which I played last time, and I updated it that it's just live board games. I don't know why it's showing Sagrada again, but no worries. That's what I played last time. Had a ton of fun, Peter playing along. So we do have the Hamlet. We've seen this before. We'll probably see it again. But we like it either way. Mm -hmm. oh. I'm going to add it over here. Now keep in mind, those, those red ones won't really score you anymore except for the spaces they fill. Having red touch three different turn types does not matter anymore because we're done scoring Edict B. So I'm going to take the smaller one, grab a coin for it, and hopefully work towards an even larger square of pieces. And we're ready to move on to the next card. Oh, now we've finally found a monster up here. Now this is the Cobalt Onslaught. This is going to start in your bottom left corner. I'm going to switch over to the other screen, show it on the map. We'll walk around the corner and show how it fits. So, this shows it starts in the bottom left corner, and it will go clockwise as it searches for a place to fit onto your map. This is our generic Tetris piece, 1x3, with a little piece sticking out to the side. So I have to start in this bottom corner against the wall of the map, I'm going to move up, over, and then down until it fits, and color that in. So the first place it can actually fit, attempting to touch the wall, is right here. Now like we talked about before, if somehow you can go all the way around the edge of the map and not touch the map and be able to fit, you move one space in and then continue going around the board in such a fashion until it can finally fit on the board. If somehow it cannot fit at the board at in any way, then you got really lucky. It's not going to hurt you. Now, keep in mind, each of these orthogonally adjacent spaces next to a monster at the end of every round will score me negative points. So I will need to work on blocking those off unless I feel I get more points by playing somewhere else. Now that cobalt card will be part of the round, but will no it will not count towards the total for the round or the season, and it cannot be drawn again. Now keep in mind there are more monsters in this deck. So the next card is going to be our hinterland stream, our big V, big L, whatever you want to call it. Farms your water, put it where you like. Try to get those points because remember. D. Oh. Chelsea, you almost didn't tell me to switch it back. But I caught it in time. So it's our big V, big L. However you want to call it. Farms or water. How do we want to fit this? Because remember, we are scoring D this round, which is farms touching water. Okay, I've got mine drawn in now. Let's start to block off at least one of the monsters. 
We had a total of three for the round. We'll keep moving. We're looking for seven or more. Now here is an outpost ruins. So that means the next card needs to attempt to go on a ruin space. Remember, if at any time all your ruins have been covered up or the card drawn and the shape cannot fit on any of those ruins because of what has been surrounded the ruin, then instead you can draw a one by one shape anywhere on your map of any terrain type, but only if it cannot actually fit onto the ruins in any way. So in this case we have the farmland, a one by two with the coin or standard plus symbol it needs to touch beyond the ruin if at all possible. Okay, so looks like I'm going right here. That's really one of the cards that did not want to appear right now. Because I had pl plans for that shape to go somewhere else. But it happens in this game quite a bit. That went on top of a ruin. And I'm ready to move on. I'll give Chelsea just a moment. And then I'll reveal the next one. Now this next one is the marshlands. It's green or blue. Big T. Total of two at the top. Brings our total to four for the season. We're still okay. We're not scoring just yet. But we do need to add the marshlands onto our map. Uh, might as well draw it here. Surround a mountain. Get some green on the edge of the map. Get myself a coin for that. I know I'm going a little bit faster this game, but Chelsea, you know how to play now. You seem ready, willing, and moving. So I'm going to move to the next one. If you feel I need to stop or slow down, just yell at me. You know what to do. And our next card is the Great River. Now this is the one by three with the coin or our big W shape. All water river. Let me verify where our count is. I'm going to put it back on top in just a second. Let me fix these cards. So this card does bring us to a total of seven, so it will be the last card for the round. So take that in mind as you place it. See what you can do with it. Hopefully you score. So I'll go with the classic W shape down in my corner. Hopefully I can get another mountain surrounded by the end of the game. Because otherwise it's not doing as much good for me. Now I'm going to switch over to score this round. Now this round we are scoring for the largest square setup again. And then also the canal lake. So I'm going to start with my largest square. Now it looks like I never quite could get to, no I did, showing it right here, one, two, three, four, by four. Everything in the middle does count as filled spaces, so I was able to get up to a four by four, even though I didn't see all the pieces I was looking for. Four times three is twelve, and now for the canal lake. You get one point for, point for each farm that is orthogonally adjacent to any water space, and one point for every water that is orthogonally adjacent to a farm space. So let's see what I was able to achieve. It's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 
How many coins do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six. How many orthogonally adjacent spots that are unfilled next to a monster of one, two, three, four, negative four. So that brings me to, that's a 34 points for the round. 800 points, Charity, you're cheating. Whose line it is anywhere in the, where the points don't matter. And that's why I can give you a thousand points and it still not matter, Chris. Okay, so I'm going to take all those cards. That monster is going to be out of the way. One more monster into the pack. Chelsea got 40 points that round. That was a great round for you, Chelsea. Chelsea, I think you are actually one point ahead of me now. Playing Cubitos for AEG during the stream. That is great, Chris. Do you know if we're going to be playing a physical copy or if we're going to be playing online? Um... I believe that I uh, we got to I got to play that with Chelsea already. Definitely a, a unique. Okay, we're gonna play the physical. Okay. I kind of feel like that's something we need to get your family to play with us too. That is, your I know your boys would really enjoy it. Okay, I've mixed that last monster into this deck. We're gonna be moving on to winter. Be scoring D and A at the end of this round. Looking for a total of six or more before we end. You lied 39. Chelsea, you did not lie. You only made a mistake. A lie is an intentional misrepresentation of something. You thought it was something different. And you corrected yourself. And it's okay to miscount. If that's the case, if you're if it's 39, nine, 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 so first round, two point difference, next round, three point difference, now you're five ahead. We are tied at this point, Chelsea. So you have a really good chance at beating me. It all comes down to this last round. Can you do it? Chris, whose team are you on? Are you team Justin or team Chelsea? <laughs> Okay, Chelsea, I, I assume you're ready. I said I shuffled this, but I like shuffling. Okay. I almost did it again. Switch it over. First card. Ruins. Okay. So whatever we reveal goes to the ruins. Homestead. No. No. The homestead was the one. Didn't want there. I will survive. It is okay. Not the worst. Because I have one ruined space in that. There's only one way that fits on it. So I have to draw this in. I have no reason not to draw it as a form. In case I find some water to set next to it later. That homestead was the one I was really looking for earlier. Hoping it came out would have come out last round. And then I would have really made a lot larger square but it never happened but i'm okay with that chelsea tonight even though i have been lurking in support yeah you're lurking in support of me but your team chelsea because you don't want me to win which i'm okay with okay so now we have the null raid this one shows that starts in the top left corner. We'll be going counterclockwise, and it is the C shape. Now, I'm going to show my map real quick and go over it, because this is one of those instances that you travel all the way around, and it actually does not fit. 
because we would start in that top corner see if a C would fit so we go all the way around the border and then continue in in a circle as we continue in it obviously does not fit so in this case it does not get drawn at all Yes, Nightbot is working now. That is something it was yelling about me before that it wouldn't couldn't post because it I mistyped something in. But I have it naturally set up so it can provide links to my stuff. Not that y'all aren't already following me there, but as time goes by, this having it set up for myself is really nice. So I don't have to type my links all the time. And just so you know, on my YouTube I just released this evening a preview and how to play the solo game of the Gem Shine Pylons, which is coming to Kickstarter, or should be coming to Kickstarter tomorrow. It's a game that has solo play, co-op play, and competitive play. One to four players, so it has a lot of interesting aspects to it. It has art that uses on the back of the cards as well as on the front, and it kind of uses a, almost a hedge or bet style of holding some cards to then have majority rules to dictate scoring of gems that you've already played. So you have to kind of gauge what you're going to play and hold and hide. But back to this game. Uh, we're revealing the next card. We've drawn our, we've drawn the null rate at this point. I assume you have Chelsea. Let me switch back my Chelsea. I assume you've drawn the null. If not, it's okay. It is a slightly longer video because the rules to it are a little more in depth for a card game. But once you get it, you get it. Okay, so next up we have the Orchard. And this is Green Forest or Farms. Oh, thank you for showing up. That was, that's going to help me. I'm going to play to the Farms into this bottom corner over here. That'll definitely give me a few more points towards the scoring card for the D edict for farms next to water and vice versa. Now we are at a total of four. We're looking for six or more, so we may reveal a card that has two or some ones. So be prepared. We're almost done with the game. Oh, and the goblins attack. One more monster. Ooh. So I'm going to show how this one goes all the way around my map and actually does fit in and sneaks his way to attack. So this one starts in the bottom right corner and goes counterclockwise. This is a three line diagonally orthogonal, well, diagonal adjacent. So starting in this corner, I'd go all the way around the edge of the map and these do not rotate. They always stay at that direction. It's going to keep going all the way around. And then it ends up fitting right here before it gets all the way back around. So I do have to draw it. So that's likely going to end up being some negative points against me because it's going to be hard to fill two of those single one by one spaces at all. Now, Chelsea, if you have any questions about how, how that one gets drawn, just let me know. But we've seen it before, so I think you know it by now. So if it does not, if a monster does not fit at all, you don't have to draw it. So you got lucky. Count your lucky stars that it ran away because it couldn't sneak its way in. Yep, woohoo. Kind of like that knoll couldn't fit on mine. But this goblin did fit. Okay, let's try this again. Now there's one more monster in this deck, so we could see one more. Likelihood is low, but we'll see what happens. We have found the Great River. One by three with the coin or the W water. No. I'm assuming you didn't want to see this, and it's going into a spot that blocks off points later because if one of those shapes does fit into your map you have to 
put it there. Like if you had one spot left that it fits, but you're waiting for a different color, too bad, out of luck, it has to go there. It's only when a shape does not fit at all, then you can put a one by one of any terrain type. I need to draw a line in, and I will draw it right here, one by three, plus a coin, and we're at a total of five currently, so we do get to draw another card. It doesn't do much for me. Yeah, it does hurt when the ends of the game gets here and it ends up blocking something or you can't really do much for it and you're like, well, that felt like a wasted card. And this is going to be our last card. So, we found the fishing village. Red or, red or blue. So we have villages or water. One by four this time. And... There's not many choices from where I can put mine. The best I can do is block a monster space. Okay, I'm going to switch the screen over and we're going to go to round four scoring. Now this being winter, we score A and D this time. I'm going to restart with D and then go to A. With D, remember we are scoring for every farm touching water, every water touching farm. Charity, if you got 71 points for the game, you lose. Okay, let me count up. I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 27 for D. Now for A, we go back to A. Every green touching the edge of our map. I don't believe you, Charity. You're not actually playing. Every green touching the edge of the map, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. How many coins do we have? I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then number... Of orthogonally adjacent spaces that are empty next to a monster. I have one, two, three, four, five. That time, negative five points. So 27 plus 10, 37. 39 points that right. So let's total this up. See if I can do my math right tonight. 11 plus 22 is 33. Plus 34 is 77. Plus 39 is what one oh seven one sixteen yeah i i realize i'm doing that chris like because i'm looking over i'm thinking about something else and it's reading the name now if you don't want me to say if you want me to only say chris or prefer me not to say that. Yeah, it, it, I know. it's Because I, I see Charity, I'm like, I want to say Charity Board Gamer, but then I'm trying to shorten it and say it faster. It's like, wait, I should say Chris. Or should I? <laughs> 109, and I got one. So, only seven point difference this time, Chelsea. Just say Chris. I intend to say Chris most of the time, just I get thinking, I'm like, wait, Name different. I will do my best to only say Chris. You didn't beat us both of the game because you didn't actually play. You've been busy all night, Chris. You've been lurk, lurk, lurking. Okay, I should have triggered the giveaway while we were taking score, but I will do that because I have one more code to give away. Before I trigger this, well, thank you, Chelsea. I, I had a lot of fun too. Uh, da, da, 
the that was Okay. Now, Chris, if you want another chance to get that app, or, or Daniel, if you're still watching, lurking in the background, we have our giveaway going again, where Thunderworks Games has been kind enough to offer a code to their digital app for cartographers. You can get either iOS or Android. We'll give you all some time to enter the keyword mapped to be entered into the giveaway. Now, I'm not sure who else is in chat right now, if everyone's lurking or if these are random stream bots, because I'm still learning all of these. Chris, you might know better. Chris, go ahead and enter, because I know you want to. Because I see users, let's see, looking at users in chat, which if there's th it, primarily three people watching, it looks like the users are some of the, the stream elements type stuff. Yeah, chill, or, yeah Chris, you, you just need to enter, because I think the main people watching right now are us three. I'm on, you're on. And Chelsea because the rest are basically stream bots and stream elements they've had their chance to enter look at this Chelsea prodding and poking and causing an uproar near the end of the stream Now, Chris, I think you should give it away on for something else, or let one of your kid or Beth or one of your kids have it. I don't see why not. Oh. No, just no. You know what, what I might do, just because he was here earlier, was part of the other giveaway. Didn't win. Wanted it. And no one else is here that wants it or is entering. I may reach out to Daniel and offer him the win. If Chris, you really don't want it. But it was offered for me to give away on stream I'm going to do everything I can to have, have that be possible as a, as a thank you to Thunderworks Games for reaching out to me to, to do this so yeah so I'll, I'll reach out to Daniel he was he entered the first giveaway and if Chris doesn't want to be part, part of the giveaway then yeah we'll, we'll officially have Daniel win the giveaway because I'm gonna I'm gonna draw the winner now and rolling it it says Chris has won the giveaway and based on what we talked about I, I believe Chris wants to give that away to Daniel so we will say Daniel officially gets the code so there he goes Chris says give it to Daniel so that's what I'll do I'll make sure to reach out to, to Daniel let him know that he now will get the code to the app. I've been cleaning. Instead of doing that, I should switch back to this. One more beautiful time. Seeing my face, even though I don't think it's a beautiful face. I know y'all like to see me smile. And y'all get to see my, my beautiful po poster in the background. So thank you for joining me tonight. That ended up being longer than I anticipated, but I had fun regardless. 
hopefully I need to figure out the next game I want to play. Um, I think I like this schedule, even though I've only done it once each. I think a shorter Friday night before I have to do playtesting, and then Monday nights like this work well for me. Thank you, Chelsea, for showing up, playing with me. I look forward to our, our Wednesday night game nights, if you're ready again. again to head, head, head to bed, 5 a.m. will be here sooner than you want. Yes, I, I would struggle to, to get up that early. I did it for a while, but I was going to bed at like 10 every night. So, good night, Chelsea. Thank you. Chris is on bed. What is that? Well... When I'm there, Chris, I will poke and prod you at 1 o'clock in the morning to walk up to bed. I can't make you sleep, but I can convince you to try. But, yes, thank you, Chris, for being here. I, I know it's probably longer than anticipated, but your support has mean, meant a great deal with everything you share and everything you've said and do to help me out. You have truly been a grace into my life. So I think with that, I will call it a night. So thank you for watching. And of course, as always, play games and spread joy.